Hello scoundrels, welcome back to the channel. If you would like to be a scoundrel, there is a subscriber button and you can hit it down below. Um, first thing you may notice is that my audio quality is garbage and that is because I am away in Germany working right now and I did not bring my travel microphone like an idiot because I packed for Germany at 4am and I had to leave for the airport at 5am so I was just in a little bit of a rush. That's having a baby for you I guess. Um, but thank you if you are here and listening and you can put up with me for about 10 minutes with this audio quality I'll be very much uh, appreciative of you. First of all, uh, I'm going to be doing this video about the Navy Caracal and I'm going to be talking a little bit about fittings and some comparisons between the Caracal and the Navy Caracal. And then I'll also show you the Caracal soloing some of the harder encounter missions, uh, at least some part of the footage for it, and I'll show you how I'm kind of going about it in this particular ship. Um, second of all, my corporation and my alliance are recruiting. If you're interested in joining the Golden Horde or Valhalla, and the Golden Horde includes such corporations like that Captain Benzie's Cat Skulls, um, you can come and join us. I'll put the links to to those particular servers in the description below. Feel free to come in and talk. If you're a corporation owner and you wish to join the Alliance, I'll put the Alliance Discord there. If you are just looking for a corporation, I would thoroughly recommend Valhalla. Really bunch of like very lovely guys. Um, and honestly, uh, I'd be more than happy to have, uh, to have you alongside us because you are all fantastic people. And I know everyone at Valhalla is really keen to uh, in introduce more people to the corporation. So uh, if you'd like to, those links are in the description below as well. So today we're going to be talking about the Caracal, and I would like to uh, talk about the differences between the Navy Caracal and the Caracal to begin with. Um, those of you that know me know that I love this ship. I think it's a great PvE ship. Missiles right now are borderline broken, even despite the nerfs coming into the, the, the live launch. Uh, we're going to have a look at the basic Caracal to begin with. Four high slots, two mid slots, four low slots. Those are the main things that you want to remember when we're comparing the two of them in terms of slots. The other thing to note is the skills required are the basic basic medium missile um, torpedo operation bonus and the basic cruiser command bonus. It has a defense of around 9,000 and a flight velocity of around 219 uh, and the capacitors uh, as you see there. Let's compare that to the Caracal Navy edition. Five high slots, three mid slots and four low slots. So you get an increase in number of high slots and an increase in the number of mid slots. The skills that you need to be aware of are the advanced versions of the versions that I just showed you in the Caracal. So advanced medium missile torpedo operation bonus and advanced cruiser command bonus to take advantage of these skills here. Um, these skills, torpedo velocity, uh, if you have an increased velocity, in general you're going to hit faster moving targets more quickly and also you'll be able to travel a bit further because of the fact that you have an activation time with the, with the, with the missiles. So uh, when you fire the missile if it's traveling faster, it will go further before it has to blow up. Uh, and the torpedo activation time refers to how quickly you're going to be able to fire your missile launchers. Now, this is slightly lower than the Caracal, but you have an increase in high slots. So obviously the DPS is going to be much greater in the Caracal Navy issue. Then when you get uh, to the Advanced Cruiser Command bonus, you get scan resolution, sensor strength, and flight velocity, all per Advanced com uh, Cruiser Command bonus per level. When it comes to defense, you have 2,500 extra defense, which is insane. You have an increase of 15 MS velocity as a base, and obviously that's going to go up the more points that you have in the advanced cruiser command and a very very big increase in terms of cap capacitor cap uh, and power grid output so you've got a huge huge bonus going into the caracal navy issue i'll take a quick look at those skills just in case you wondered where they were so the skills that you're concerned about when it comes to the caracal navy issue is the advanced medium missile torpedo operation which i've currently got at level four and then you also have the advanced cruiser command which is down here which I'm currently at level 3 so I need to put an extra point in that uh, but I am currently training cruiser defense upgrade level 5 because I just want to make my caracal a bit more beefy um, so that is the skills or those are the skills that you should be concerned about when dealing with the caracal navy issue let's take a look at fittings and we'll talk through some options as well as the DPS output that this insane ship has so taking a look at the fittings, uh, I have 383 DPS right now. I could actually hit 400 base DPS if I found or at least looked for some particular upgrades. The upgrades that I would be looking to get are rigging upgrades and uh, a slight upgrade on the ballistic control system that I'm using. But let's have a look at the high slots to begin with. High slots, they should be filled with uh, rapid mediums, either Mark V or if you have the cash. And these are about 10 mil each when I bought them. They might be slightly cheaper or more expensive now, I'm not sure. 
Um, these are uh, incredible, incredible weapons, um, and you can see uh, that they are 36.53 DPS as a base, activation time of 6.24 seconds, uh, and their range is 18.75 kilometers. Uh, I've got five of these, uh, so all five of my high slots are occupied by Republic Fleet medium missile launchers, but Mark V will work, you'll just have slightly lower DPS output. When it comes to mid slots, uh, I've obviously got a, a medium drone in the drone slot, so the, uh, the Mark V Hammerhead. I much prefer the Hammerhead over any, any other drone just because uh, kinetic damage is always nice to have. Um, and then I've got three Nosferatus. Now, the reason I've got three Nosferatus is it basically helps me tank a little bit more effectively by keeping my cap topped up. Um, I probably would end up replacing one of these Nosferatus with something else, like a warp, uh, a, a warp scrambler or something like that. But right now, I've just got three Nosferatus, uh, and they're... I'm, not, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, not entirely sure if they're working at maximum capacity for all three of them, but it's worked for me so far. Um, two was working before, I was like, why not just go for three? Nothing else to add. The only other thing that I would consider changing out was maybe a stasis web of fire, um, which would help me slow down some of the quicker elite ships when I'm dealing with those. When it comes to low slots, now, it's worth noting that right now, um, shield hardeners and armor hardeners are apparently not working, which is why I'm not running them anymore. So I'm running a smuggler medium afterburner, which is essentially going to obviously boost my uh, ship speed, uh, which is great when I'm doing orbit kiting, because obviously if I orbit at a certain speed, people that run tracking, some of the larger ships like battleships and cruisers that have poor tracking speeds won't be able to keep up with me as easily. And actually I found that if I'm activating this, I'm getting a lot of tanking capability versus the bigger ships. I've got a full duplex uh, ballistic control system, but any ballistic control system will work. I'm running a Republic Fleet medium shield booster, which I found on a mission, but they're actually very expensive. They're about 10 to 12 million, I believe. And then because shield harden is not working, I'm just running another shield booster. So I'm running a double shield booster setup. And um, this is actually giving me a lot of DPS. Now let's have a look at the rigs. I actually invested into defensive rigs or mechanical rigs um, this time around, and I went for warp core optimizers. The reason I went for warp core optimizers is because versus certain um, ratting uh, like tier eights or tier sevens and very hard missions, they will run scramblers, and you do not want to get caught with your pants down versus a very big wave and they're scrambling you. So I'm running warp core optimizers to prevent me from getting scrambled. It's also good if a random frigate approaches me, does not have a particularly strong um, warp core scrambler, and I can then use these to just essentially give me a bit of a buffer and allow myself to escape. Then I'm running DPS rigs this time around. So I could be running um, defensive rigs, but I've actually decided to run offensive rigs for clearing a little bit more uh, rapidly. I'm running a Warhead uh, Califaction Catalyst 1. Um, the, the level 2 version was about 40 million, so I haven't got that. But I'm running Warhead Califaction Catalyst 1, which increases the damage of my um, missiles by 12.5%. And then I'm running Bayloading Accelerator 1, which increases my or decreases my activation time by 7.5%. These two are the two big, if you're not concerned about range, these two are the two biggest DPS increases that you'll get for your missiles. If you run two warhead calefactions, you'll actually get a decrease in effectiveness of the second. So by running these two in combination, you're going to get the maximum output from your rigs in terms of uh, pure offensive capability. So those two in particular are the ones that you'll be looking for. And actually, bayload accelerators, I think, are really, really important for increasing DPS. And they're actually much cheaper than warhead calefaction at the moment. So if you've got a mil or two to spare, get yourself a bayload or accelerator if you're running missiles, because they're really, really, really really good. So that is everything uh, with the Caracal fittings. Let's take this baby out for a spin and I'm going to show you what I'll do. I'm going to actually going to go towards uh, the 1.5 mil or which one should I do? 1.5? Yeah, the one, let's do the 1.5 mil one uh, by ourselves um, and we'll just go and, uh, we'll go and deal with it straight up. So yeah, we're going to do the 1.5 mil one, three jumps away and then I will see you there. All right, we are here doing this first wave. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to just get and orbit the, or, I'm going to orbit the thorax and pop my Nosferatus on that. I'm a little bit out of range of, range of it right now. We're going to immediately kill the Incursus. I'm going to get my um, little ship out. So I want to kill the Incursus straight up. Uh, again, I'm on um, blue stacks and it's not exactly running it particularly well. Uh, I'm not taking too much damage right now. I'm going to pop my... I'm still being locked onto by a lot of them, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I'm going to pop my ballistic missile control system to really start to push down the Algos. We're up against two Myrmidons. Actually, we're against Myrmidons right now. Um, do you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to orbit the Myrmidons and actually 
do that and I'm going to get the thoraxes down separately. So I'm going to have to just quickly change targets. And then I'm going to start pumping damage out onto one of these thoraxes. And we should be pretty good. We're pretty stable right now. And you can see, like, in terms of damage output versus... You know, I'm almost one-shotting 1,300 damage versus the drone thorax there in one volley. Absolutely insane. We're not actually we're not actually getting much cap drain from um, from the battle cruiser right now, but that's okay. We're going really fast. We're going really fast, and we're going we're to just circle these guys and get through them. Please tell me I'm not the only person, though, that thinks that they randomly nerfed the range of the... At least the, the range of the skill bonuses that you get from the um, the medium missile skills. Because I just... My range dropped off a little bit. I, I don't know what was happening. The activation time was, was obviously... I can't really tell if the activation time has changed or not. But um, the range definitely has. It doesn't really matter for me because I'm obviously circling at 8 kilometers. But 100% oh, the range has dropped off somewhere. I'm going to start to orbit this guy. Let's have a look at the loot. I don't know. There's only frigate wreck right now. Getting a, you get a lot of bounty for um, for for battle cruisers, by the way. Get a lot of bounty. Okay, so I'm actually I'm actually draining cap again. Maybe I actually drained that guy's cap outright. I might have like 100% drained that Myrmidon's cap. Okay, we don't really need the uh, shield booster right now. Gonna pop the uh, ballistic missile control system again. So with soloing waves with battle cruisers with relative ease. Now I do think that um, this 1.5 mil mission is going to get harder. So I'm assuming that I'm going to be going up against a tougher wave with elite battle cruisers. But what you notice I'm, that I'm doing is I'm just taking out the frigates, the destroyers, the cruisers, then the battle cruisers, and that's kind of my plan of action. I orbit them, and you can see because of my speed, I'm actually not taking much damage from these battle cruisers at all. Look, every time he fires, he's missing because I'm close range. Um, and where's the frigate wreck? I'm going to loot it while I'm here. Galente. Um, he's missing. Like, I'm not actually taking any damage, and all I'm doing is speed tanking on my Caracal. Um, so if you've got a Caracal with an afterburner, some of the bigger ships, you're not going to get affected by as easily, which is great. Uh, is there going to be a battle cruiser wreck? No, but we will get uh, another Myrmidon, which I'm going to orbit, uh, and I'm going to try and take out the uh, Incursus ASAP. So the Incursus is going to be my target. That Myrmidon, I'm going to focus my Nosferatus. So we take out the Incursus. It's done, and then we're going to take out the um, the Algos, which shouldn't be a problem. I'm actually going to have to pop one of my shield boosters. But I'm, I'm basically three volleying Algoses. Okay, we just need to get one more down here. All right, that should be fine. I'm going to switch over to the Algos because I want to kill it. Doing quite a bit of damage to the cruisers, obviously. Uh, I'm, I know we're a little bit of pressure here, so I'm going to pop all of my um, abilities. I didn't actually pop that here. So I should be able to kill this destroyer with relative ease. Yep, that's down. We're going to take out the Celestis now. Can probably uh, relax a little bit. We're again versus two cruisers. I'm just going to try and loot this before I'm out of range. Oh, I'm too far away from the cargo. Oh, no. Inertial stabilizer. All right. Again, we are now tanking pretty effectively with just one shield booster. This is why a shield hardener would probably be okay. But the double shield booster is actually good in a Hail Mary scenario. Uh, we're getting low. We are getting absolutely tons. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that my drone is actually attacking the right target right here. But yeah, we are getting, like, boatloads. I'm actually going to switch my Nosferatus over because they seem to be not draining anymore. And orbit this guy. We're draining a little bit, but not a huge amount. It's because my booster is still going. Um, I should be able to speed tank these guys after the cruiser goes down. 
going to quickly boost and kill that guy. Um, I shouldn't have any issues now. Shouldn't have any issues now. Like I should be able to just mostly speed tank these guys with the afterburner. I'm at 700 meters per second orbit speed, which is actually pretty insane. And we're going to wait. Just again, it's another situation of just waiting to kill the battle cruisers. They're worth a lot in terms of bounties, though. Like, I, what? I, I maybe took five minutes maximum to clear this, and um, we're going to get like one mil in bounties plus 1.5 mil for completing it. No, it'll be 10 minutes. 10 minutes to clear 1.5 mil encounter and um, claim the bounties. Unless there's another wave, but I'm taking no damage because of the speed that I've got at this point in time. This is why Afterburner can be pretty good on the Caracal Navy issue, because you have a higher base speed. Um, and actually, it, it, it's a really low, like it doesn't require much capacity to run, and it helps you in terms of defensive, uh, more so than any sort of proper defense things could versus battle cruisers. The speed that you can get in orbit versus cruisers is really important. But uh, obviously with my rapid lights, or my rapid mediums rather, it's a little bit harder to take out the bigger ships. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer. But I'm not taking any damage, so it doesn't really matter. Not even having to kite effectively. And I'm just going to pop. No battle cruiser loot, by the way. So 270 seems like the max hit here. So 1380 is like the, the average hit for my, uh, for my missiles. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of tempted to see what it's like specifically with... Um, with my, my, my ballistic missile control system. So let's give it a go. Next volley. I think it'll be... It's a little bit lower for some reason. Why is it going lower when I activate my miss ballistic missile control system? Why am, I de why am I dealing less damage with my ballistic missile control system? Activation time adjustment. Damage bonus. I don't know why. I feel like I was maybe two seventy was just two seventy was just separate because maybe two four eight is just the. Uh, well, but I was getting two seventies before, but for some reason now I'm getting I'm getting two eighties or two forties. Should be able to clear this with relative ease, and there we go. Completed the mission in just over ten minutes exactly. Easy enough, right? I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, the Caracal Navy issue is very strong. Easily able to clear 1.5 mil to, to 5 mil missions. Um, have no issues with them. Have actually been able to complete a lot of the storyline mission waves as well by myself. This ship is absolutely insane.